In this video, I have some tweets from Harada, but what I really want to focus on is these two massive news articles. One of them dates back to the start of Tekken 7, like a little bit after it came out, Harada was talking about just the hardships of Tekken 7. And then we also have another news article about Tekken 8, one that's literally like a month ago. And I really just want to talk about these and dissect it because customization is kind of a big topic and Harada's kind of telling us everything we need to know here already. The interview from 2017 from Game Developer has a headline that says, Between a Rock and a Harada Place, the massive Tekken interview. Now, what I'm about to read is related to items and how much effort and work goes into that. Because when you talk about items in Tekken 7, it's kind of an afterthought. Everyone talks about like customizations, they think hair, they think clothing, but items is just as much a part as the customization. I would say it probably is the thing that matters most because it can actually affect gameplay. Harada says, this is a quote, we are happy that people are enjoying these elements as it was quite difficult to achieve this. For the customization element, there were a lot of problems to overcome to get to this point. It was not as simple as it may seem. Even if you acknowledge that a person's perception may be quite different depending on their race or country of origin, and you try to address all of the critiques while also trying not to infringe on others' IP, you'll end up with a very run-of-the-mill item or something that is unique and strange, but not familiar to everyone. And this is kind of a interesting take. The first paragraph he basically says, it's hard to make these. You have to do mocap, you have to make sure it's work, make sure it's balanced. It's like a, it's like an attack that every character can equip. It, it, it really is kind of a weird thing when you think about a item that every character can use. Harada says, depending on the costumes or items presented, it might turn out to be something that has historical meaning and is offending some country. There are quite a few cases in which we have deleted customization items for this very reason. The face paint, uh-oh. Face paint is another item that adds a lot of freedom for creativity, but we had to delete some of these. In Japan, face paint is used quite often as festivals and other cultural events. But we were told some of these were highly likely to be offensive in some countries and we had to give up on these items. I don't know if you guys know what he's talking about. I'm not even going to talk about it, but I know what he's talking about and I can definitely understand why they ejected it. Definitely. Fans often say the people who are complaining haven't even bought the game, so don't worry about it. But isn't that simple? Even if fans I don't listen to them, these complaints cause wider issues so they can't be simply ignored. And compared to past development, today's video game development requires highly detailed textures and the physics components also weigh heavily on the game's engine. So it's resource intensive. Even though the risks are like those mentioned are above or high, it's an issue that always gives me a headache. And this was back in 2017. And I think now a lot more people realize like in 2022 that when the hate mob or the hate crowd gathers, it's no ignoring them. At this point in the video, I want to jump into the news article that Harada did about Tekken 8. I want to focus specifically on what he said about customization because I think a lot of it was overlooked because we were also focused on heat, on characters, on gameplay, on the overall aspects. But let's talk about this. Harada talks at length about how all the models and everything from Tekken 7 have been totally discarded. That's something we have to keep in mind. Everything, items, customization, everything totally discarded is the quote. With that in mind, let's read what Harada says about customizations. The question from IGN says, I know it's still early, but a big question that's being asked by a lot of fans is, how much customizations can we expect? Something on a level of say, Tech Attack Tournament 2, that kind of thing. Harada says, so it's an interesting topic because I joke 
that I should have never included customization. It was included for Tekken 5 and I didn't think it was going to be such a thing until after it was released and everyone just really took to it. This part here, he kind of talks a little bit about the mod community, you know, high buff gigas, those kind of creators. We brought up that the people who want more sometimes build their own mods and customizations is even crazier. So it's just amazing how much people are really into customizing their character. Talking about mods, I think they should just full on embrace it. They should set up in Tekken 8 the option to equip mods, like let's say high buff, kick. I don't know who creates these mods, but let's say high buff gigas creates a mod then that mod can be officially added to tekken 7 in the modded customization slot and then you can like agree to terms and all that stuff but then you can equip that to your character and you could go into ranked with it of course not character mods and stuff like that but i'm more so talking about like outfits designs one that would take a lot of stress off the developers but two, it would just give us more like we've been dying for. It's not a far-fetched idea. There's a lot of games that already support modding, like really support it. With Harada officially acknowledging it in this news article, I think it's about time they go ahead and just full on embrace it. Harada says, I have a theory that fighters like Street Fighter and others usually have just set skins because they saw what we have to do to develop customizations and how intensive it is on resources. They're like, no, we're not gonna do that. That's my theory. Customization does take up a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of effort. One example that I give, you guys remember the suit that was added in Tekken 7, the Harada suit. Imagine them creating that one suit and then going to each and every character and sizing that, making sure it fits. There's no clipping, there's no elbows poking through. Sizing each and every shoe, hair, glasses, hat to every character, that must take a awful amount of time. Like the developer who does that, they are the true hero. Going through and sizing hair to every single one of your waifus, you gotta appreciate that developer and tell them thank you. Regardless though, all the time and effort that's put into this, I think the community definitely will appreciate it. I think we do appreciate it. Just all throughout Tekken 7, I see so many different creative and unique designs, even when we don't have as much customization as we used to. And I think even the developers see it, Harada says it he, in this news article. My thoughts on Tekken 8 is, I think they will put a lot of effort into customizations and, and just all these things, right? Game modes, characters, story. They see the complaints and they see the wishes, right? The stuff we want after dealing with Tekken 7 and just all this stuff, they see it and I think they will try to please everyone. I really think that Tekken 7 could have been the best fighting game almost ever if it really didn't have some of the problems that it did. And I think Tekken 8 will, will try its hardest to snuff out all of those issues. And I think customization is one of them, game modes, and the list goes on. But in this video, I just want to talk about customization and give a little bit of what Harada says about it. He mentions how it's too difficult. He mentions how he wants it to be relatable, how he wants it to not infringe on other people's copyright. And then even when they do take all that stuff into account, there is something that they will have to remove, but that's just the way game development works. That's it. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also leave a like on this video and tell me what you think about customization down below. I'll see you in the next one and bye bye.